All right, this is going to be a really noisy one because we got the road right here. We're going to hear a lot of cars go by. All right, but I'll try to do this as quick as I can. This is not the site. I'm just pointing out the sign for this hospital site itself. It says Chester Springs, earlier known as Yellow Springs Resort since 1750. Washington headquarters after the battle of Brandywine, hospital for his soldiers during the winter encampment, also during the Valley Forge, uh, the Valley Forge campaign. Now, we're about, uh, I would say, about a half a mile from this hospital site. But I just wanted to point out that that sign is on the road here. There is a historic marker that's uh, th uh, explaining that there is a hospital here. Now, uh, that's the next place we're going to be going to is this, this hospital site that was uh, uh, Congress had wanted to make a hospital. And this was the first hospital in U.S. history. Now, we're going to go to that site right now. Okay, I'm back on location here. Now, the uh, ruins you see behind me are this hospital in Yellow Springs. Now, uh, like I said, the sign was down by the road uh, explaining that there uh, was a structure somewhere in the vicinity explaining uh, that uh, it was a hospital. Okay, now we're going to take a look at this site. I'm actually going to do walking around with the camera so you can get an, uh, an idea of this structure and how it was laid out because the ruins are very, very good. You could really see the layout of this hospital. Now, this hospital uh, was destroyed in a fire in 1902. It burnt down to the ground. Now there are postcards of this hospital that exist. There are photographs of this hospital uh, during the 1800s that show this hospital in the original configuration that Washington and his uh, and the army would have saw. Now this is a two-story structure. This is not one story. It would have went up two stories. It would have looked like a square building, uh, like a warehouse. Uh, now we're going to go and uh, not go into it right now, but I'll, I'll go into the room and I'll, I'll explain that. Now we're going to take a look at the history of this hospital. Now after the Battle of Brandywine uh, in 1777, now the troops were moving out from Chester and trying to regroup and trying to get supplies they needed. They needed wagons. They needed provisions. They needed powder because after the Battle of the Clouds, most of their powder uh, was destroyed. So they needed to resupply the army. Now Chester Springs here is outside of the it's outside of the Great Valley somewhat. We're actually, uh, if you notice, there's a hill here. We're actually in the mountainous area, starting to get into the Mount Misery uh, Valley Forge kind of area. But we're not near Valley Forge just yet. But we're close enough. We're close enough to the battlefield and Valley Forge where this is central. Now this is really important because after the Battle of Paoli, uh, the Battle of Paoli, there uh, Anthony Wayne and uh, a bunch of his Continentals were in that area. Now, after, you know, Washington had put the Continentals, they broke up the army after the battle into different areas for protection because this was the retreat route to go to Reading to resupply. They had to come out of the Great Valley, they had to get these roads, and they had to take a, a remainder, a certain portion of the army out and try to resupply without the British knowing about it. Now, what they did was after the Battle of uh, Brandywine, uh, you're looking at September 11th, by September 19th, uh, where the battle was happening at, uh, you know, uh, up at Paoli, uh, they broke up the army. They had to have protection. So they, Washington said, okay, to, uh, Anthony, wait, we want a group of you just to keep an eye on the British that were in the Malvern area at the time. And they were actually in Paoli in the Malvern area, uh, some of the British. British. Now they were after what they were licking their wounds too. They had a lot of things that they had to take care of. But all the army had broken up. The British army broke up. The American army needed to resupply. This is uh, on the way to the resupply. Now this hospital wasn't here. Now th th this is what I just learned. This hospital was built during the Valley. For I mean uh, uh, the Valley Forge campaign. This hospital wasn't here. But this area is historic because Washington did stay here. His headquarters were here as they were starting to move out of the area trying to resupply in Reading. Now Washington came through this area. He, he brought a, a majority of his army. He brought wagons. 
and he brought wounded. He had to bring a lot of the wounded out with him too to drop off in these areas. Now there would have been hospitals all along here with soldiers. Now, he didn't know where he was going to win her. Uh, I think they went up and they went to Whitehall or somewhere in that general area. Uh, there was another uh, encampment before Valley Force that they stayed in for a few, I think it was a few weeks. And then they tried to go to a permanent encampment, which was Valley Force. But Valley Forge is very close here. We're all in proximity. We're not very far away from uh, each other here. All these sites are, are within probably walking distance. Not walking distance, but, but traveling distance for the army. I mean, it wasn't hundreds and hundreds of miles. We're talking tens of miles, uh, 20 miles, 30 miles, probably at the max. But as um, Washington's army uh, had left Anthony Wayne over at, uh, he, he, they left Anthony Wayne at the Paoli battlefield to keep an eye on the British movements. Then this area here, Washington moved out of the Great Valley into this area. They, they stayed here. I think they stopped at Yellow Springs uh, to, uh, you know, they just moved, stopped the army after about maybe two days march. They stayed in this general area where we're standing. I'll have to pan around. I'll do some uh, filming down at the, the spring itself. And it's a beautiful area. It would have looked exactly like this with the trees and the mountains and a few sparse farms in this area. But it is hilly. They couldn't really farm this area because it is mountainous and, and hilly. So basically there would have been wooded lots up on the hills here and the structure behind me. I'm going to talk about that in a little bit. Um, like I said, Washington came through this area. He stayed here. Uh, and then uh, after, I would think it was about two days, uh, they retreated out of this area to head towards Reading to resupply the army, at, at which he did. He went and he, uh, there was a, uh, a, a smith there where they made cannonballs and everything else. And it wasn't destroyed by the British. So he, they, they, they traveled to that area. Now, afterwards, uh, the Valley Forge campaign, uh, December of 1777, you know, I think it was the 13th, they encamped uh, in that area. They came from another place that they were encamping in. I think it was White Marsh or White Hall or something like that. Don't quote me on that one, but they had retreated out of there and they found a better vantage point, which was Valley Forge. Now, Valley Forge, uh, if you go there uh, and you could really get an idea of how that uh, area was strategic, I'm sorry, strategically uh, evaluated uh, for the area. It was beautiful. They really knew they could really see the vantage points. You could really protect that area very well with redoubts and so forth, what they did. Now, I think during that campaign, don't quote me on this one, they, uh, they got in touch with Congress, said, look, we need help. We need help with this. We need help with that. Uh, there was a lot of uh, going around because nobody had anything. Uh, during the Valley Forge campaign, as you know, uh, you hear stories from school books and so forth about, you know, it's, it was a rough time, which we all know it was somewhat rough. But uh, they were maintaining themselves very well there. They made huts and they encamped in there. Now, I think uh, one of the stipulations also that they were asking for was where to take their wounded. They had a lot of wounded soldiers. They were called the walking wounded. These guys had festering wounds. They had uh, injuries from the battle. They could have had gangrene. They could have had trench foot because it was the winter time. There was muddy roads. It was horrible. So I think they, they, they told Congress, hey, look, we need, we need some place to take these soldiers, not just the farms because... If you bring them to a farm and they start to get, uh, you know, better, they could just walk home. We wanted some place we could actually take an eye on them and take care of our soldiers without them deserting the army. That's where this comes in. This is where this comes into its own. I think during uh, that time frame between 1777 and 1778, uh, they started work on a hospital for Valley Forge. Now, this was the first revolutionary, this is, not the, it was, this is, is the first revolutionary war hospital ever built. And probably the only hospital in the United States, this is the first hospital ever built in the United States, right behind me. Like I said, it would have been a two-story structure. Uh, it's been restored here uh, after the fire of 62. It completely destroyed the building. Uh, it During the, I think it was 17, uh, it was the 200th Bicentennial. I think it was, uh, what was it, 1998 or the 200th, uh, with the Bicentennial, where they, they had the Constitution and all that stuff. I think it was 87 or something like that. Um, they uh, This went on the historic registry. It's a historic property now. It's owned by uh, the historic, uh, it's on the registry of historic places. I think there is a plaque up there demonstrating that. But uh, they carefully uh, took the remains of this and they, uh, you know, they, they, they preserved it. They wanted to preserve what is left because 
um, after that fire of 62, they could have just, you know, bulldozed it down, but they knew the significance of this structure here, and they kept it. They didn't damage anything. Uh, you know, if I'll pan around, you'll see some buildings here. The, these are locally owned buildings. They probably were built during the Civil War time. This probably was just generally, a, a, maybe there was a farmhouse here and some land with trees, mostly wooded here. Uh, there probably could have, uh, some uh, those tenant houses could have been in the area and the main farm could have been further away. All right, so let's talk about this hospital itself. It's very historic. Uh, like I said, I'm trying to finish up these videos of things that I missed. And uh, I knew about the hospital, but I just didn't know where it was. I was, like I said, I was talking to a colleague of mine, and we came up with the conclusion that, hey, this, this is right up here. It's not very far away. Now, it's a little quieter more up here. That's, that's wonderful. You get a little bit of back noise, as you can hear from a truck. Uh, it's real quiet. This is farmland. It's not like the road. Uh, where I was filming the sign. Uh, now, uh, the hospital was constructed in a specific way. This is not just a house that they just built. They didn't just say, let's just put up a house and call it a hospital. This is built as a hospital. It's built with rooms. It's built with larger rooms. I'm gonna take you into there. We're gonna walk around inside these rooms. I'm gonna show you exactly what this looks like. Uh, it's, it's kind of incredible that this structure stayed. I mean, I wish I really had some postcards and show you what it looked like, but I'm sure that you can look them up on the internet and find out exactly uh, what this looked like. And if, if I follow up with a video, if I get the information, I'll follow up with another video and I'll try to put some uh, uh, postcards or whatever this looked like when it was originally here. But you kind of get the idea when you walk in what it looks like. Now I'm gonna take my gloves off, uh, grab this camera, and we're gonna go there and we're gonna check out this hospital. All right, guys. Looking at the hospital, okay, the structure, okay. We're gonna go to the doorway. I would assume this would be the doorway, inward. Okay, it's a large structure. Okay. As you see, this is a room. Here we go. This is probably one of the entrances to the hospital. There was probably a staircase, most likely. Maybe it went up to the second floor. As you can see, the wall is here. This is one wall of the hospital. And it wasn't really that big. If you take a look here, it probably, like I said, it was two stories. Take a look downward. It's not that big. You know, it goes for about, I would say about maybe 100, 100 feet, 200 feet. Look at the wall here. This is one of the walls of the hospital. This would have been uh, probably, maybe there was a, a wooden outhouse here, maybe to put the horses in. In this area, there would be uh, stocks here for uh, horses and so forth. But let's walk into the hospital itself. Now, if you look at the, the rocks, they're local, local limestone. This is quartz. These are local rocks. The wall has been restored. You can see right here, they patched the wall, what was being restored. As you saw the wall, it starts to get higher. And this is probably the first floor. Now we're walking into one of the patient rooms. Okay, let me back out a little bit so you can get an idea of, they're not that big. Get a little bit of a shadow over there with the wall. But I'm gonna stand right here where the wall is. And this is one of the patient rooms. Okay, you probably put, let me see if I was judging, if I was at the door here, say I'm, right now at the door. You could probably put maybe, double them up, two, uh, with a walkway. You're talking about two guys, two, four, six, and then 12 guys in a room, it looks like, uh, considering how high the wall would be. If you look at the first story, which I'm gonna show you up here, this is probably the end of the first story. This is probably where the, the wood joists, uh, the trusses would go across for the second floor. As you can see, that, that, go, that extends the whole length. Let me zoom in. You'll see that that wall extends. That's probably the first floor. And the corners. Get a better idea of the corner here. That's an original corner of the building. But you can kind of get an idea. It's a patient room. Now, what's just nice is that there's an adjacent patient room. So this is an original doorway. It's a doorway here. Okay, as we see, we're going into another room. Now, as you notice with this room rather than this, this room is very large. This is a humongous room for a hospital. And as we see, there's probably a doorway 
which is here. And we have a window. Now windows back then, they let the bad air out. Back then they, they didn't really think too much about that. They didn't know about diseases and so forth. So they would have windows that let the bad air out. They didn't know. But you can clearly see that's a doorway. In the corner here is the corner. But this is a very large room. It's, a, it's quite a, a good sized room. Uh, you know, this can hold a lot of patients. Uh, this room right here, this was designated as a hospital. It was built as a hospital. This is not a farm structure. This is not a house. These are very rare. This is an extremely rare construction of a Revolutionary War hospital. As you see on the top, you'll see the second floor. This is the first floor. That's where, like I said, where the wood would be. And overhead, you would have uh, trusses going to the second floor. Probably the second floor had smaller rooms. This might have been intake where they had certain patients here. And up on the second floor, maybe they were a little bit more healthier. And they didn't want them with the, uh, the, more, the persons that had a, more of a disease. Say they had cholera or anything like that. They probably had areas where they were staging. Where you would have somebody come in that was very sick. They would stay maybe in an area that was uh, quarantined off. And then when they felt better, maybe they stayed upstairs. But that's just what I'm saying, but I really don't know if that's the truth. Okay, we're going to walk through the door of the hospital. One of the doors. You're going to look back into this large cabinet room. As you can see on the camera, it's, it's a very large room. Very interesting. And we're going to go along the wall. This is the outside. This is the outside of the building. If you look, we're still walking. Here's the window that we talked about to let the bad air out. This is the window. Now we're going to walk around to another room. Here comes another room. These, this would be a window here, right here. This would go up probably around here in this area. This would be a window. Okay. Now this room's large also. Do you see how big this room is? Okay. You're looking here. This would be another window. This is where right here, I know we got shadows. But right here in this area is the other window. It would have went up this way. This would have been a pillar in this here. There's a pillar here. And there's two windows. There's a window right here. It goes up, up into the top where the second floor would be. Now let's go into this room. See, here's another doorway. As we walk into this room, this room is very large. Here's the second of the large rooms. Okay. This room is humongous. I don't know how many soldiers. Maybe this was quarantine. This was a quarantining area. But I'm just going to tell you that this room is absolutely humongous. This is the biggest, probably the biggest room in this area. I don't know if it could have been a dining area. It could have been a staging area. It could have been an area where they felt better. Maybe they played cards. They had uh, different activities in this room. Uh, but like I said, most of this is lost. Now this is an interesting structure. I kind of got to look at this to figure out what this is. I don't know what it is. Okay, I think, let me go and take a look at it. As we're looking around this large room, we, we see a door, we see the wall, and we see two more windows. Like I said, that, that would be this post in the middle, would go up further, there would be a window here, and there'd be a window here. Okay, now we look at this. This looks like an oven to me, because if you're noticing, this is probably interior heating. This has to be interior heating. Now, if we take a look, I'm going to lower the camera. As you start to see, this starts to curve around a little bit. If you look at the edge, I know we're getting very bad shadows in here, but as you start to see, you start to curve around. I think that this was the internal, this was the heating source for this building. And then we look here, and then there's... Uh, a wall here but this definitely curves over this starts to curve and there's rocks that have fallen from this area right here but if you have any ideas what this is I don't know uh, I would love to know what this is my best guess doing this for a long time is this was the hearth this was a hearth it probably had heat and I don't know if they probably cooked here they could have had an outdoor kitchen I don't know if they wanted to cook inside the residence. I thought that they thought that that wasn't appropriate, maybe, because people were sick. But you get an idea right here in this frame how it starts to curve over. Curves over, and this probably curved also. This probably, it doesn't look like it's curving, but it probably curved over to make some type of uh, heating. Uh, they would throw wood in here and uh, have a fireplace. Now, as we look here, there's something completely different here. Okay, You have something that juts up. 
that goes on to the next. There would have been stairs here. Now, I think that this was the second floor. This was how to get to the second floor. So basically, you stepped here, okay? Now, I'm gonna walk around because I don't wanna climb a wall, but, and then you see a wall here, okay? There was probably wood steps here, went up there, and then they curved around and maybe went up. Now, let's take a look over there also. But if you see, this is a completely huge structure. It's got a door. These, these were rooms, this is a big room. Uh, I would love to know if anybody knows what these rooms were used for. But you kind of get an idea, being a dedicated hospital, they were probably, they can, they can hold a lot of soldiers here. A lot of guys stayed here. Okay, let's go around to that staircase. As you can see, this is the end of the wall for the hospital. There's no more. Get a shot of the whole structure. Starts at this wall, then it heads all the way down. Okay, it's not a very large building. It's a pretty good sized building. It's a square building. Okay, so we're gonna walk up here and most likely this was the second floor. We're starting to go up the stairs. Now, you would've came around here. There would've been stairs there. I'm up on top. Okay, right about here. This was the standing area. And then, like I said, here's another wall, but it looks like a little hallway. This isn't very big. It's not a room. If you notice right here, this is definitely not a room. If you look at the wall here, this is where I just showed you the stairs. It's here and here. It's not big. Nobody can stay here. This is where the stairs were to go to the second floor. Now you stood here. This is probably where the stairs begun. And they went straight up. Straight up to the second floor. Probably curved this way. They probably went right back onto the building again. And that's where you had the other floor. Now, we don't know what that kind of floor might have looked like. Maybe it was smaller rooms. Maybe it was dormitories. We don't know, but we can clearly see this floor, the bottom floor, what the bottom floor looked like. Now, I'm going to try to get a vantage point for you guys. High up here, I'm going to give you a vantage point. Clearly below us was a hearth for heat, I'm guessing, or possibly a cooking area. But there is a lot of area for them to be outside to cook. But you can actually see how large that first room is. This is number one room, and there's two more rooms across that. Now, we're going to go on top where the garden is, and we're going to look down into the structure. So if you follow me, come around here. You can clearly see that this is a smaller area, stairs. And then we go into the herb garden, which they would have had an herb garden here, definitely. They would have had healing herbs because it is a hospital. So if you come over here, and we look down on the structure. Here's the wall, okay? Here's the doors and the windows, and there's the stairs. We'll walk down further, we'll take a look at the smaller rooms, the two smaller rooms of this building. Okay, come over here, here's the wall that separates the larger room. Okay, it's right below me, it goes across this way to the right here, that's a window. Here's two windows, this would have been right here. One window, two windows, doorway, and then there'll be two windows here. This would be up, one, and two windows. And here, as you can see, there'll be one window, the doorway, and then the entranceway. Maybe a, a, a staging area. But if you look at this room, it's smaller than the larger room. This is the larger room. And then you see the smaller room, we'll walk over. Okay, we get some bushes here. Okay. And the smaller room right here. And what's really nice is we have a interesting 18th century herb garden historic yellow springs. Okay? Just telling us about that herb garden here. I'm gonna put this back here. I don't say too much about the hospital itself. Let me see. Maybe we'll take a look at it, but maybe it does. No, it's just basically here. It says hospital ruins. Okay, I'll give, you, give you an idea. Let me get in the sunshine so we can actually take a look at this. Might actually be very helpful. Okay, here's the hospital ruins. Uh, doesn't say too much about it. it says, no, yeah, doesn't say too much. Just basically about the historical society and how they continue to plant gardens in this area. Really not too helpful to my video, but. What's helpful is this structure. Okay, as we look down, this is where I began the structure. I mean, I began the video. 
the smaller room. This is the smallest of all the rooms. This is the entrance way. Maybe wagons came in here. I'm trying to think now that because of that opening, maybe I would assume, maybe this is where wagons came in. Wagons came in here. It's about the size of a wagon. It's not as anything bigger than that. And then there's a door there. They were probably taken in. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of assuming this was probably where the wagons came in. The wagons came in and dropped off the patients here. It's my best guess. I mean, it looks like that. There's no other doorway. That doorway over there is large. It's, there's no structure there. The end of it is there. I mean, you can clearly see that there isn't anything attached to this wall going this way. Yeah, this isn't. Uh, this was where the wagons came in with the wounded. Okay, and then you can see this is the end of the wall right here. This is the end of the hospital. Okay, we're going to walk down, and I hope you enjoyed that, because I really did. I thought that was really cool and interesting. And up here, this Historical Society of Yellow Springs has put in an herb garden. Of course, it's the winter time, so you're not going to see anything here. But they really wanted to continue that, because during that time, they had herbs that they used for sick people. And there was an herb garden here for the hospital, and probably it was up on top of this terrace. These aren't original walls, I wouldn't assume. They're probably built later. Okay, so what we're going to do, walk down. And like I said, there is the stairway. Very, very interesting. Here's the end of the wall. Okay. And you can see the whole hospital itself. That was very interesting even for me to look at that because I really haven't walked around this too much. Now we're going to go back down to the tripod mount, take a look at some other things, talk about it, okay. Put this in the frame, the tripod mount. That was great. That was, that was awesome. I was even surprised. Now, what I'm telling you basically is speculation. From what I notice and what I know, I know where the windows were, I know where the doors were, I know where the rooms were, and I kind of get an idea that that was the hearth. That was where all the heat for the building during the winter time, it had to have some type of hearth that radiated heat out. Now, or it could have been some type of cooking, but it was definitely a circular structure. And in the 1700s and the 1800s, those round circular structures were hearths or it was heating, internal heating. Now, like I said before, it's, it's, it's wonderful. This is absolutely great to have something like this in the area that's, that's being preserved. I mean, you had a fire in 1902, okay? The fire was destroyed the original structure in 1902, the original Washington structure. Oh, I forgot to mention that the locals, and I'm sure other people called this Washington Hall. This was called Washington's Hall. And it probably was being used afterwards in the 1800s, maybe, uh, uh, don't quote me on this, but they definitely used this. It wasn't just, um, you know, if it burnt down, it burnt down for a reason. Probably somebody was in there and they were using it and they had coal-fired stove maybe and it burnt down. And uh, during uh, 1962, they, uh, in 1902, they did rebuild the structure. Now they did it, I don't know, to, I don't think they really had specifications they built these things to. They probably just built them uh, to get it back up and running again. Now, I would have loved to seen that thing during the Civil War. It would have just looked like exactly like it would have been probably during that time, 1777 and eight. Now, uh, this structure uh, during the encampment was being used now, all, the, all around Valley Forge, there was houses being used. There's a, a tavern uh, that we go to to have uh, dinner. It's called the Black Powder Tavern. Uh, there's very much lore about that being used. I mean, it's not very far from the battlefield. And this was probably for the worst of the worst. That's what I'm assuming, that this hospital was used for the people that had cholera. They had diseases that they didn't want other people to catch. So they brought them out of Valley Forge and they brought them to this hospital in Yellow Springs because this was designated as a hospital. It was the first one in the American history, this hospital. I mean, how historic is that? Now, 
uh, I was like I said, I was talking to a colleague about that about this, and he told me about this. I kind of knew where it was, but I never filmed about it. And he said that, oh my God, there must be bodies all over the place because people in this hospital, especially in Valley Forge, now they were coming from the battle, they might have been wounded in the battle, maybe a graze wound, or they had some type of amputation. Now. Uh, you're talking Valley Forge, December, from September during the Battle of Brandywine to the encampment in December. You know, you could have had a festering wound. You could have had something going wrong with you where you're at Valley Forge and you're getting sicker and you're getting sicker and sicker and you come here and you die. They didn't count that as a battlefield casualty. That was a casualty after the war that was not recorded. There was probably people that died here that were never recorded. And uh, because it's on a hill here, I bet you all the tea in China, quote that, there's got to be hundreds of guys here all over this area. Now, where did they bury them? There's no record of that. We do not have records of anybody being buried here. The speculation is it's a hospital. Uh, they're buried. If you see older hospitals today, uh, hospitals from the 1800s where they did not have refrigeration like they do today, you'll always notice that a hospital has a cemetery nearby. I mean, we have a, a where my uh, wife's uh, great grandparents or her, yeah, her great grandparents are buried. Uh, it was a miner's hospital right across the street from the miner's hospital. There's the big cemetery all the hospital if you died in the hospital there was nothing they can do but just bury you close by because basically during this time your body started to putrefy and they didn't want that around because of the sickness that that might have caused so they had maybe carts maybe that area and yeah, carts in there to cart off the dead you know i think that was an entrance way for carts i really believe that that we were talking about and they would have carted them off, probably down by the little spring or down here. It was easier to dig in the ground near a creek. There must be guys all over here. People are saying they buried him outside the hospital, that colleague. Oh, they're I don't think they buried him near the hospital. I think they took him a little bit further out. Now, we're going to walk down with this camera. I'm going to show you where the spring itself is, the Yellow Spring Spring. Now, this was a resort during the 1890s or somewhere in that time frame. They thought that that Yellow Spring water was was helpful and healing. Now, I don't think Washington thought that. Maybe they did, maybe they didn't. These are all the things we don't know. Maybe they heard about Yellow Springs as being a holistic area where the water was supposed to help you and things like that. And that's why they built the hospital here. We're still a little bit un un unsure about why they put the hospital here. I think because Washington maybe came from came through this area, which he did. He came after the after the battle of uh, at the Battle of Brandywine. That the hospital wasn't here, and he probably looked at this area and said, "This is." A wonderful place for a hospital it's clinically out of the way it's in a wooded concealed area uh, and there's probably trails in all directions that came in here and it was kind of out of sight of the British there was nothing around here there was no mills to burn the British didn't want anything in this area this was a great strategic location for this hospital because it, it probably concealed they didn't want a hospital where the British were gonna come in and you know kill everybody they didn't want anybody here so and I don't think it was because, maybe because of the encampment, they wanted it close. But I think that Washington, during that winter encampment at Valley Forge, uh, knew about this area. And he had said to uh, the Congress that I want to build a hospital for my wounded at Valley Forge in Yellow Springs. I'm positive that that was the conversation that he had. He wanted a hospital uh, that was just to take care of the guys, not homes. You know, he didn't want these Quakers uh, taking in the sick because I don't I, I don't know. At that time, I think that it was, you know, you didn't want to, these guys, if they're sitting with a family, you get orientated with that family. The soldier gets orientated. He gets better. Maybe he falls in love or he just kind of wanders away. And like I was telling you before, maybe they did this to keep soldiers in line. They wanted them to stay with the army. Now, I'm glad I showed you guys this because I missed it on my thing and I, I'm glad I went up with the camera and walked around. That is an excellent structure. It's a beautiful structure. It's being, uh, it's being taken care of uh, very, very, very nice. This area is very historic and there's a lot of historical societies here that keep this area in the general condition it was. Now I'm going to take the camera and we're going to walk down to the spring itself. And I'll show you the spring itself, and I'll kind of give you some idea of this area and how pretty it is. Thanks, guys, and I really appreciate you uh, coming back, and, and I'm, I'm redoing some of these videos, but, you know, I'm, I'm glad you're sticking by me.